In part two, chapter four of 1984 by George Orwell, the narrative delves into a significant moment in the clandestine relationship between Winston Smith and Julia, further encapsulating their doomed rebellion against the party's totalitarian regime. Through a secretive arrangement with Mr. Charrington, the owner of a secondhand store from which Winston purchased his diary and a glass paperweight, they acquire the use of an upstairs room where they can conduct their affair away from the prying eyes of the party, albeit temporarily. The chapter opens with Winston waiting for Julia in this rented room, contemplating the risks they are taking by meeting in such a manner. His reflections are interrupted by the singing of a prole woman below, which is generated by a versificator, emblematic of the party's manipulation of culture. Despite this reminder of the omnipresent control exerted by the party, Winston takes solace in their temporary escape. Julia arrives, smuggling contraband luxuries such as coffee, sugar, bread, jam, and tea, commodities that are rare and symbolize a small rebellion against the regime. She also wears makeup and perfume, further defying the party's norms. Their intimacy is a form of resistance, albeit personal and fleeting. The room becomes a temporary sanctuary, allowing them to experience moments of what life could be like without the oppressive watch of the party. Their peace is briefly disturbed by a rat peering through a hole in the wall, which triggers a profound fear in Winston, as rats are his greatest terror. Julia tries to comfort him, displaying a rare moment of tender intimacy between them. This incident with the rat serves as foreshadowing, hinting at future betrayals and the ultimate price of their rebellion. Winston and Julia's conversation turns to a nursery rhyme taught to Winston by Mr. Charrington and partially known by Julia, hinting at a shared cultural past that the party seeks to erase. This connection through the rhyme further solidifies their bond, but also ironically hints at impending doom with the rhyme ending in violence. A chopper to chop off your head. The glass paperweight becomes a poignant symbol in this chapter. For Winston, it represents their attempts to preserve their love and humanity within the oppressive and transient reality of Oceania. The coral inside the paperweight, observed by Winston, symbolizes himself and Julia, frozen in a moment of time, an eternity at the heart of the crystal. Yet, as the narrative unfolds, this optimistic symbol becomes a harbinger of their fragile utopia's inevitable shattering. This chapter masterfully intertwines the personal with the political, showcasing Julia and Winston's fleeting moments of happiness and rebellion against a backdrop of constant surveillance and control. It highlights the human need for connection, intimacy, and resistance in the face of dehumanizing forces. However, Orwell also prepares the reader for the transient nature of this rebellion, indicating that in the world of 1984, any attempt at personal autonomy and subversion is fated to be crushed by the omnipotent party. That's all for today. If you like this bookly chapter summary, please let me know by pressing the like button or leaving a comment down below.